Film producer Scott Budnick took a break from Hollywood to focus on criminal justice reform. He's the founder of the Anti-Recidivism Coalition and is now back making films. His recent movie, Just Mercy, hit theaters earlier this year. My colleague Vladimir Dutier spoke with him to discuss what's being done today to help people incarcerated during the pandemic. Here's part of their conversation. You brought up the fact that, you know, these prisons are essentially petri dishes because everybody is so uh, is confined together on top of each other and in fact even prison officials prison guards are getting sick yeah and you have obviously the staff that work in the prison not just the officers but the nurses and the doctors and the teachers and everything they're coming in and out every day so they're going out into the community and coming back in and who knows if they're affected who knows if they're getting it from the inside the outside so um yeah it's it's an incredibly dangerous environment we just you mentioned the concerts that we did in the prisons. Um, we had partnered with the um, uh, uh, rapper, artist, activist, Grammy Award winner, Academy Award winner, Common, um, to do concerts in the prisons um, in California. And we did, I think, about 10 concerts in 10 prisons in 10 days. And um, when I told Common that this pandemic, that most of these prisons are locked down, folks are kept in their cells, they cannot see their families anymore, visiting's canceled, all the volunteers, uh, all the pe people of faith that come in and run religious service, everything is canceled. Um, they are seeing the news every night. They are terrified for their families. They can do nothing about it. Um, what can we do for them? And last week we had what was supposed to be an hour Zoom interview that turned out to be an hour and a half Zoom interview where we had a conversation. We talked about mental health. We talked about a lot what he does uh, to deal with anxiety and, 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 and mental health and breathing exercises, but also it was really beautiful. In our concert tour, we met many incredible men. We met a guy named Charles Anderson, who was in his 10th year of prison. He was once a gang member. He was in prison for 10 years, uh, but now he was a college graduate and a computer coder. He was the valedictorian of his software engineering program inside prison, and he was six months away from getting out. So Common interviewed him uh, in prison. He then got out, has been out for two years as of this month, um, and now is a software engineer at Slack in the Bay Area. So Charles popped back on and we got to see Charles as a free man and he got to tell everybody and we were able to take that conversation and send it to the California Department of Corrections and they put it on every TV and every cell so we could give those in prison the same type of hope, optimism uh, and inspiration. And as soon as we did that, about uh, a dozen other states reached out to show it in their prisons to bring the same amount of hope and optimism. And so we plan to continue this every week. And what are you learning when you speak to some of these uh, prisoners uh, through Zoom, through the use of technology? So what unfortunately, we weren't able to have to be in a dialogue with them. It was just something we had we got to put in, so they got to watch it in their cells. But I get collect calls all day long from folks on the inside, and the folks again, the folks that I, I, I I'm getting calls from, I've known since they were teenagers. They are in there. They're in college. They're in coding programs. They're in construction programs. They've really transformed their life. But they are terrified, not just for themselves, but really for their families, for their friends, for their communities. Um, and we're just trying to kind of give them some positive information, let them know what they can do, just in terms of if they can social distance at all in there, um, and trying to be there for their families um, as well. As somebody who has built a career around creative projects, and uh, making millions of people either laugh or cry or have some kind of an emotional reaction to a piece of art that you helped to create. Um, did you, even before you got into that business, ever think to yourself that ultimately what you wanted to do in any capacity, whether it was uh, through the arts or through what you're doing now, was a way to uh, make people feel better, make people sort of inwardly look inside of themselves and, and find something that maybe they didn't know that they had um, uh, some humanity with the, any other projects that you were working on. Because I, I sort of feel like as uh, creative types, generally, even when they're young, there's a reason that they're drawn to doing things that are endeavors of art or um, music or film or literature. So I just wondered about yeah. you growing up as a kid, if you had that sort of like little fire inside of you. Good. That's a deep question, Vladimir. Um, thinking back, uh, I think about like movies that affected me when I was young that deeply affected me. Um, Stand by me, mm. and just uh, kind of a you know um, 
a kind of loss of innocence and and a coming of age story like that really affected me in, in a huge way and the power of young friendships right um field of dreams and uh uh, even this film behind my shoulder, The Shawshank Redemption, right? Like so many films as I grew up, like really touched my life. And so I really knew the power of film um, uh, to touch people. I think as when we made The Hangover, and I know it's silly to say this, but it was really nice seeing a comedy that had a lot of moments that made you laugh come out during a recession where people were going through such tough times like today and they just wanted to come out and laugh. And that was a beautiful thing in that moment. And I realized that in the film and television business, we have an enormous platform to do a lot of harm in terms of the stories that we tell or do a lot of good. And I saw what I believe created this crisis is that every night on the news, the worst crime that happens around the globe is put in everyone's living room every night. And that's a scary thing. I, it was a scary thing for me growing up. So when you see these horrible uh, depictions of crime and gang members, and a lot of them are folks of color, right? And the news is slamming you with that. Um, it's easy to say, okay, lock them up and throw away the key. All these issues of inequality where people are suffering, whether it's in the criminal justice system, whether it's immigrants and refugees, whether it's people suffering in poverty, women and girls who are not getting equity, education systems, people struggling with mental health and addiction, that being able to tell stories and humanize and partner with major uh, television studios and movie studios to distribute that content around the world, that to me was the way to, to deeply scale and leverage that type of humanity, that type of storytelling. And we started the company and Just Mercy was our first investment into a film. And I'm just so proud of it and so proud to tell the story of my hero, Brian Stevenson. And I think through the campaign um, that we're running, we're uh, hopefully doing a lot of good.